Hola, mi amigo. <clears throat> My bad. What is up? Welcome back to another Whisker Chan banger video. It's your boy Whisker Chan in the building, and in today's video, let's cut right to the chase. No stalling at all. Yes. In 1.3, as you guys know from the trailer, we are getting a choice of a free character. And in today's video, I'm going to do none other than helping you choose which free character you want out of all of them. And also evaluating which one is worth it and which one is not. So, anyway, before we even get into this video, before we even you even get your answer, if you have not skipped this, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Join the subscribers on the grind to 2,700. And also hit the notification bell down below to be notified of all my daily uploads. And also smash the like button because you're going to enjoy this content. But without further ado, let's get right into this video. Alright guys, as I said, yes, in 1.3 trailer, it showed that there will be a Stand By Me event where you can literally choose any character for free. So these are the characters that are options that you can choose. There's uh, Zha Ling, there's Zhen Yan, Beidou, Ning Guang, uh, Jing Kui, and Xiong Yu. If I pronounce some of them wrong, I am sorry, okay? I will go to the dialogue and listen to their name. But anyway, these are the characters that are going to be in the Stand By Me event, which is going to be in 1.3, and these are what you can choose from who is free. Now, you're probably asking, who should I go for? Like free to play players that don't have any five stars, probably free to play players that just started the game. You're probably asking who should I go for and why should I go for them? Well, luckily your boy has all those characters. So we're going to go over all these characters in detail. We're going to go over some of their um, constellations. Is it worth the constellation? I'm going to try to summarize each character as much as I can and not like read too much about them because I don't want to make this video too long for all my viewers. So anyway, let's go ahead and get right into this and show off these characters and see which one you should opt for out of all of them once we have this free, uh, free character event. Okay, so we're gonna go along the line, and the first character that is there is Zha Ling or Jing Ling. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. But anyway, guys, this is a pyro pole arm user, and if you do not know, if you're new to the game, I'm pretty sure you you don't know that she's not a really super good character, but she is good. Now the reason I say this is because by now, honestly, the reason I think you should not go for this character in this free event is because of the all the chances you have of getting this character actually at once you could get this character from for free from an event so honestly in my opinion i think you should definitely just skip this completely and i'll i'll tell you exactly what the opt for but the reason you should skip this is because you either have her by now or you know you don't but if you don't it's not really that big of a deal because she is really good but really where she comes in handy is actually like supporting other characters and the reason I say this is because our constellation decreasing the power res of enemies and whatnot, and it makes basically doing you're gonna do more power damage depending on who you play. Like say for example the Luke, and then you'll have the double power elemental resonance, and then I'll just make the you know make it a super support for the Luke, and that that's really basically it. She's a really good support for DP, not DPS, but like D, like DPS support and decreasing elemental res of, uh, by pyro. And also, another really, really good thing she is for is for reactions. Because of how our elemental skill works, guys, if you do not know how it works, she literally throws out a little bear that basically just, like, it sits there and continuously breathes fire at the opponents and does AoE power damage. And it does a considerable amount of damage, but what, like I said, what you want out of that damage is literally to 100% just cause reactions, whether that's melt, vaporize, overload, any of them, okay? And also, our elemental burst is really, really good. The reason I say this is because it's a burst where you can do it, and basically, this will display her mastery over both fire and pole arms. She will send a power nato whirling around her, like continuously whirling around her, dealing AoE power damage to everybody around her. And the duration is 10 seconds, which is pretty good, especially if you like have a team for reactions and whatnot. Um, and this, th her passives really aren't that good. But this passive right here comes in handy because it increases the flame range of Guoba, which is our elemental skill, by 20%. Which also, you know, makes it easier to reach those targets so that you could cause those reactions like melt, vaporize, and overload. So that's really Jean ja uh, Lang, or however you pronounce it. But basically, this character, like I said, you don't want to offer this character out of all of these characters, in my opinion. Because the character is a really good support, a really good, you know, uh, res decrease if you have constellation, of course. And all that, yes, yeah, she's pretty good. But you do not want her if you need a main DPS. And if you already have a main DPS and you want some supports for reactions, okay, go for her. But if you don't have a main DPS, you do not want her. And yeah, that's the end of the discussion. She's really not that good, but she is pretty decent of a character. 
Now we have Zhao Yan or Jin Yan, right? So this character right here was released not actually not too long ago. I'm pretty sure she was released on whose banner? Was it was it Child? No. Yeah, it was Child. I think she no. She was released on Zhong Li's banner, right? Yeah, she was released on Zhong Li's banner. She's very, very new. There's no way you could get her. There was no way you could get her for free at all. The only way you could get her is if you summoned on the banner. So I feel like she has a very, very high value in this whole choose pickup event for a free character. And also another thing to note is this character is absolutely great. The reason why I'm saying that is because she has a shield. And y'all don't know the importance of shields, but let me just read it. Jinyan brandishes her instrument dealing pyro damage, right? On nearby opponents, forming a shield based on the people she hits. So like basically how many however many people she hits that's how strong her shield will be so hitting zero to one opponents grants uh shield level one ad lib and then hitting two opponents grants shield level two hitting three or more opponents grants shield level three now the good thing about this is right here uh if you unlock this passive it will decrease the number of opponents your elements of skill will have to hit in order to trigger the the shield levels so basically what it's saying is you're going to completely skip shield level one once you unlock this passive and then skip to shield level two and three so after hitting uh after hitting what one enemy you go to shield level two and after hitting two enemies you go to shield level three which makes it way better than you know hit, having to hit more three or more enemies to get shield level three so it, it just makes it a little bit easier so i feel like this is going to be really a really really good thing about it and the fact that it does some power damage and then also the shield has the following special properties when unleashed it infuses uh Jin Yan with pyro meaning if you unleash this right and you swap to a what let's say for example a hydro or a cryo user it's going to continuously uh it fuses you with pyro or Jin Yan in that case and it'll just do a little bit of power damage to the enemies that are nearby and once it does that power damage it you know prones you to reactions if you have another character within her shield so anyway, it has a 250% damage absorption effectiveness against power damage, which is pretty, pretty good. So like I said, uh, uh, it's really, really good, but like I, it's more of a, it could be a support and it also could be like if you want to main her as a DPS to protect her. So anyway, it has the swing damage, which is 212%, can go up, mine's only level 4. Um, the shield level 1 um, damage absorption is 130, shield level 2 is 153, and shield level, th uh, shield level 3, if I said, I hope I said shield level 2, shield level 3 damage is 180%, and then it's plus defense as you can see right there, uh, or if you can't see it, let me actually cut off my screen. So yeah, as I was saying, it adds defense and then, you know, the percentage as well. So the reason this is so good, guys, is because, like, it... I feel like the passive being able to boost this like make it come faster to where it's like shield level three already instead of like having to go one or like go two after hitting one or two enemies you go straight to level three after hitting two enemies that's like really really good because you're gonna get the literal max max shield level three and then the defense and then also you have to remember guys let me show you something the shields damage absorption scales off of her defense her bit off of her defense so basically the more defense you have on her, the more it's going to defend you. Like, uh, right here, the defense will go up. You know, the percentage will be... Like, it's literally based on your defense. So, the higher defense, the better it's going to shield you, the better it's going to protect you, and whatnot. And as you can see, the damage over time is 42%. It could go up. The shield's duration is 12 seconds. So, it lasts for a really good time. If you want to, like, put another character in the shield for reactions, it lasts a pretty, pretty good time dealing that, you know, power damage. And then, you know, you could proc those reactions like melt, vaporize, overload, and all of whatnot. But, yeah, the shield is very versatile and very very good and then we have our elemental burst which is basically she strums her instrument uh instrument rap uh, rapidly and Zhao Yan launches nearby opponents and deals physical damage to them hyping up the crowd the sheer intensity of the atmosphere will cause the explosion and deal pyro damage so what this means guys is basically it's going to literally do right here skill damage and then it's going to do the power damage over time and then it's going to you know like that's that's really it the reason this is so unique is because once you do this elemental burst it's gonna literally do like it's gonna do physical damage and pyro damage so that's like really insane once you think about it and honestly the reason it's so insane is because characters shielded by the sweeping fervor deal 15 percent increased physical damage so if you have her shield on not only do you have you know like the quality of being infused with pyro if you're on another character but if you're on her you just have the quality of uh being infused with pyro you also, once you do her elemental burst, you're going to get a 15% increased physical damage bonus. And that's going to apply to your burst. So once you do your burst, you're going to do a lot of physical damage. And then you're going to do a lot of power damage depending on the build you have on this character. So this character is really a DPS in my opinion. She can be a support for reactions and whatnot. And also for like shield. She definitely could be a support in my opinion. But this character overall is like really good. And honestly, 
uh, out of all of them. Now, I'm not going to like just skip to conclusions because there are a lot of characters in this banner. Or not in this banner, but in this event that you could choose from. Uh, but basically, this is one of the top characters you can choose from, 100%. So let's go ahead and get on to the next character. The next character is none other than Beto. Now, Beto is one of those characters. Like, I, you couldn't get this for free anywhere. You'd have to summon and get lucky, maybe. But basically, what is so good about this character? Well, this right here. This is one of the best, in my opinion, like, like, in my opinion. Just, like, raw opinion and raw experience from playing this a little bit in the beginning. When this is this skill is the same the reason why is because it has a press and a hold of course But the press is only like where you literally just like shoot out Electro damage you literally just slice electro damage, but if you hold it and let an enemy hit you literally let me read it to you Lifts her weapon up as a shield the max damage absorbed scales off of Beto's max HP Attacks using the energy stored within the great sword upon release or once the ability duration expires deals electro damage damage dealt scales with the number of times Beto is attacked in the skills duration. The greatest damage bonus will be uh, will be attained once this effect is triggered twice. The shield possesses the following properties, has a 250% electro damage uh, absorption efficiency and applies the electro element to Beto upon activation. So guys, what does this mean? You hold this shield, somebody hits you, you're going to do more damage. And that is why this is extremely good. As you can see, the shield's damage absorption is pretty good as well, based on our max HP as well. So the more HP you have on her, the better the shield's going to do. So when you hold this out, they're going to hit you. You're not really going to take damage. And then you're going to smack them for tons of damage, which is why it's so good. The damage bonus on hit taken, 212%. It could go up even higher. Mine's only level 5. And the cooldown is 7.5%. Uh, I mean, 7.5 7 seconds, guys. And that is really good. And... There's another reason she is extremely good is because of her elemental burst. And the reason I say this is because of how it works. It can be literally put on any character, whether you want reactions or whether you just want more electro damage on Beto. I've combined this comp when I first started playing with Mona. And basically, I would just like do elemental burst from this and then go on to Mona and then do tons of electro charge damage since Mona's a mage and always does uh, hydro damage. But anyway, like, let me read it. Uh, Thunder Beast Targe or yeah, Targe. When normal and charge attacks hit, they create a lightning discharge that can jump between opponents dealing electro damage. This increases the character's resistance to interruption and decreases the damage taken. Uh, and a maximum of one lightning discharge can be triggered per second. The skills damage 131, the lightning damage 103, the damage reduction is 21%, the duration is 15 seconds, the cooldown is 20 seconds, the energy cost is 80. Has a very steep energy cost, really, really steep, but at the same time, you're going to get a lot of energy back from doing Tide Caller, especially if you hold it and let an enemy hit you so you can do tons of damage, and it's just going to be so good, right? And let's go over our passives. Basically, when you counter attack with Tide, call, uh, tide Caller at the precise moment when the character is hit, it will grant the, grant the maximum damage bonus. So really, like, if you let them hit you as soon as they hit you and you do Tide Caller, you're doing the maximum damage bonus, like, maximum, just off of that. So, like, if you time this perfect, you're going to do a lot of damage. Uh, and also, this passive right here, you will gain the following effects for 10 seconds after unleashing Tide Caller with this maximum damage bonus. The damage dealt by normal and charge attacks is increased by 50%, and attack speed of normal and charge attacks is increased by 50%. This is greatly reduced. Greatly reduce delay before unleashing charge attacks. So what this means is basically after you do a tide caller perfectly after one person hits you, like if you just time it really good, you'll get the maximum damage bonus. Then you'll get your attack and your normal and charge attacks increased by 50%, the damage, and then attack speed of normal charge attacks is increased by 15%, and you'll greatly reduce your uh your delay before unleashing a charge attack so you'll literally be a little god for a couple of seconds which is extremely extremely insane so i feel like definitely this character is also a top tier character very very good character in my opinion um i got lucky getting her at the beginning but anyway like i said this is a character you cannot get for free as well unlike ja uh Jean ling you could get her for free like i said well you could not anymore but like there was an event where you could actually get her for free literally just do it and you got her but anyway like i was saying this is another character that's one of the characters that are on the top tier list but anyway let's go ahead and go on to the next character ning guang now guys this character is a famous 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 character for the mere fact that she is absolutely insane four star unit and the reason i say this is because of what she can do what support she can do if you want her as a support but mainly her dps she can go crazy with dps because of how her normal attack works how her jade screen works and how elemental burst works so anyway let's go over all of this right here as you should know she is a mage user so she's going to be doing all geo damage no no normal attacks and whatnot 
But like, you know what I mean? They're normal, but they're not like doing white damage. So anyway, we have the Jade Screen. Now this, the reason this is so unique is because it not only does it block opponent's projectiles, the Endurance is based on her max HP and also the passive for this. Let me find it. Basically, when you walk through this Jade Screen, you will the character that walks through it will uh, get a 12% Geo damage bonus for 10 seconds. So that means like if you walk through with Ningguang or if you walk through with uh, Albedo or if you walk through with Zhong Li, all of them are getting an increased Geo damage bonus by 12%. And I feel like it's very beneficial, especially for her because of the damage she could do and it's absolutely insane. But yeah, this is a really, really good skill because the inherited HP is 50%. The skill damage is 230. This could all go up. It's only level 1. So this could all go up pretty high. But like, the skill's damage is pretty good as well as what it can do. The passive is really what it's used for. The skill damage is pretty good, but the passive is mainly what it's used for. Getting that 12% increased Geo damage bonus. And also, another reason it's so good is because the 12 second cooldown matches almost with the 10 second 12% Geo damage bonus. So basically, you will almost be able to proc this Geo, uh, geo damage bonus every single second second for her so anyway we go over her burst her burst is basically where she gathers a great number of gems then guang scatters them all at once sending homing projectiles at her opponents and dealing massive geo damage if the star shatter in cast when a jade screen is nearby the jade screen will fire additional gem projectiles at the same time so if you have this open basically you're going to do additional damage so if you do her elements of skill then her elements of burst you're doing additional damage and if you walk through it you get a 12 percent increased geo damage bonus which is extremely good because the character is really a really super dps unless you want her as a support for a geo team like albedo maybe or like zone lee when he gets his buff and whatnot or yeah when he gets his buff and whatnot but mainly what you want to use her for is probably a DPS, knowing that most people don't have a lot of Geo characters that are extremely good, because some people didn't summon for Zone Lee, and some people didn't summon for Albedo. So mainly she's a crazy insane Geo DPS, and I definitely recommend her as well. But anyway, um, this is extremely good, and then this right here, when Ningguang is in possession of her Star Jades or Elemental Burst, her charge attack does not consume stamina, and her charge attack does a considerable amount of damage. The charge attack stamina costs 50, but since it's not going to consume anything once you have this passive, charge attack damage is 174%, which is insane damage. Insane, absolute insane damage. So being able to like just spam that once you do your uh, Star Jades or Elemental Burst is insane. So basically in all necessity, once you put the Jade screen out and you Elemental Burst, you're literally just going to do massive numbers of damage and just destroy the field. Uh, so anyway, that's really about it for her. Let's go ahead and go over the next character. Here we have Jing Kui. If that's how you pronounce it, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but anyway, this is a Hydro character. Actually, really, I, I'm pretty sure we got him on whose banner? Oh, yeah. We got her. <laughs> I'm over here forgetting already. We got him on Ganyu's banner, basically. Uh, this character is actually pretty decent. But the reason, like, I wouldn't... He's not, like, a super DPS. What he is is a really, really good support for reactions. And the reason I say this is because of how his elemental scale works. He literally, basically... Can summon rain swords so what I mean by that is basically he will perform a twin strikes with a sword dealing hydro damage at the same time the ability creates the maximum number of rain swords they will orbit around your character the rain swords have the following properties when a character takes damage the rain sword will shatter reducing the amount of damage taken and increase the character's resistance to interruption 20% of Zinqui's hydro damage bonus will be converted to additional damage reduction for the rain swords so the maximum amount of additional damage reduction can be gained uh, that can be gained this way is 24%. The initiated maximum number of rain swords is three. Using this ability applies to wet status on the character. So why is this so good? You're probably asking. It's because if you have, like I said, reaction based, elemental mastery based, you want to go like that. But basically, if you have a character on your team that is pyro, if you have a character on your team that is electro, and you simply just want some reactions because you have tons of elemental mastery and you want to do tons of damage. This is the way to go because of this being able to put swords around you that will, you know, not only protect you but have the hydro damage and deal hydro damage. So that will proc the reaction. And then we also have this elemental burst which does something a little similar. Basically, your rainbow blade work, your active character's normal attacks will trigger consecutive sword rain attacks dealing hydro damage. So when you have this elemental burst basically, it's just like this a little bit but a little bit different. Um, you're, every time you attack, you'll deal hydro damage from the swords attacking with you. And this lasts for, uh, let's see, 15 seconds to cool down to 20. So guys, why is this burst so good? It's because, like I said, for reactions and how insane it would be for, like, teams, he's really a good support, but, uh, his passives really only support him 
in, in general, like as if he's a DPS, but he's really not a DPS. I mean, you could try to build him as a DPS, but mainly he is used for reactions and support. So that is what I think about Jinkui. He's really not something you should go crazy for, especially if you summon on the Ganyu banner. I'm pretty sure you already have some uh, Jinkuis. So yeah, definitely not him. Now last, we have the Frost Boy Chong Yoon. I'm pretty sure you guys are all thinking, wow, that was cool. <laughs> anyway, you guys are all thinking about getting him probably most likely because of the aesthetic, especially if you're new to the game. But let's go ahead and get right into it. So first we have his elemental skill, which is basically where he strikes the ground with his greatsword, causing a cryo explosion and a circular AOE in front of him that deals cryo damage. After a short delay, the cold air created by the cryo explosion will coalesce into a Chongyun Frost Shield, within which all sword, claymore, and pole arm building character weapons will be infused with cryo. So that means basically you're literally gonna do any any of these right here, sword claymore, pole arm wielding characters, you're literally your weapon's gonna be infused with cryo. So you're gonna be doing cryo, cryo damage once it coalesces and whatnot. The skills damage is 215%, the infusion duration is 2.3 seconds, and the field duration is 10 seconds. Now the this could go up in level as of course, and the skill damage could go up and whatnot. But let's go ahead and go over his elemental burst as well. Performing the secret hand seals, Chong Yun summons three giant spirit blades in midair and they fall into earth one by one after a short delay, exploding as they hit the ground. And when the spirit blades explode, they deal AoE crowd damage and launch opponents. And the skills damage is 178% and the cooldown is 12 seconds. The energy cost is 40, which is extremely good. And you're probably saying why? Well, it's because this right here, when it when the field created by his elemental burst disappears, another spirit blade will be summoned to strike nearby opponents, dealing 100 percent of Tonyan's layered frost skill damage as AoE crowd damage. And the opponents hit by this blade, or oh, or yeah, the opponents hit by this blade will have their cryo res decrease by 10% for eight seconds. The reason it's so good is because if you have a cryo comp like Ganyu or whatnot. Double cryo resonance, you know, gives more crit rate, but not only that, it's also really good because, you know, decreasing the cryo res means you'll do more cryo damage, and that's all that, you know, Ganyu does if you want to use him as a support for any type of, you know, ice DPS, cryo DPS, uh, whereas Ayaka, even though Ayaka's not here yet, whether that's uh, Ganyu, whether that's, you know, Kaya, but mainly, this, is, this character is really, really used for his support on what he can do, decreasing the cryo res, and doing tons of cryo damage, and infusing your characters with cryo. He's mainly a support character. Also, sword claymore and pole arm wielding characters within the field created by his elemental skill have their normal attack speed increased by 8%. So he's really a support for reactions, but like a really good support for the fact that he, he's literally turning the team up, like, you know, doing more cryo damage if you want, or, you know, increasing the attack speed, you know, infusing you with cryo, meaning you can do reactions and whatnot. So it's like extremely, extremely good. I feel like definitely he is a really good option, but who should you choose out of all of them? Who wins the cake? Out of all these characters now I'm not even gonna hold you guys I'm not even gonna lie to you it's either Jin Yan and the reason I say this is because of how good this character is and also because you're not gonna be able to get this character for a well, like you know if you get lucky maybe but not for a while you're not gonna be able to get this character if she's not featured in a banner uh, but anyway Jin Yan Ning Wong and Beto now honestly these are the characters I would choose. These, this is my opinion. This is like just from raw me playing the characters and me also like you know seeing what these characters could do, doing research and whatnot. Because some characters I have not played, I have not played uh, Jin Yan yet uh, because materials are scarce. And honestly, I wanted to make a showcase on her, but like the time I got her, it was the time I was maxing out you know Child and Zone Lee. So it was just like yeah. So anyway, basically Jin Yan Ning Wong. And Beto. It's between those three, but who I would choose out of all of them is either Jin Yan or Ning Wong. And let's summarize in my brain who would I choose? I would choose Ning Wong. Because she's an insane DPS, she does tons and mass massive amount of damage. And honestly, for free to play players, that's probably the main problem everyone has is getting a really good DPS that's not a five star. And that will be Ning Wong. Ning Wong is insane, but she is also insane as a DPS as well. Beto is sort of like B tier in my opinion. She's extremely good. But at the same time, compared to Ning Wong and Jin Yan, she does not quite beat them. So for sure, it will be either between Ning Wong or Jin Yan is who you should choose in this event when we get this free character. In my opinion, that's who I think you should choose. But yeah, overall, I would probably go for Ning Wong, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. So anyway, guys, that's really about it for this video. I just want to go over these, all these characters. As far as constellation, guys, well, that's pretty simple. Just look at the constellations and see which constellation actually is worth it. If you don't have the character at all, definitely, like I said, between Jin Yan and Ning Wong. But constellations, constellation wise, it's like it really depends, guys. Like I said, you have to read the constellations to see what you're benefiting from it for yourself. So, anyway, that's really about it, guys. That's what I think. 
should happen. That's what I think you guys should pick. Is definitely, you know, Big Girl Ning Wong or Jin Yan. So anyway, that's about it for this video. Thank you for everybody who came out to watch this video. I hope you did enjoy. And if you did, make sure you smash that like button down below. And also smash the subscribe button. Join the subscribers on the grind to 2,700. And hit that notification bell down below to be notified of all my daily uploads. I hope this video did help some of you out, you know, picking the characters and whatnot. This was actually a pretty tough decision. Considering that I put a couple of good characters inside this free event. Where you could get a free character, a free four star Liyue character at that. So it's ex extremely good, extremely insane, and I can't wait for this to come out. But yeah, like I said, either Ning Wang or Jin Yan. So yeah. Anyway, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.